Endo could feel the sun beating down on him as he slowly rose from the ground. His shoulder felt like it was on fire, a sure sign that it was dislocated. Endo began to look at his surroundings as he tried to get his bearings. As Endo scanned the horizon, he noticed a group of people in the distance who seemed to have taken notice of him. It didn't take long for them to find me, Endo muttered to himself as he began to run in the opposite direction. It didn't take long for the group of men to catch up to him. If it wasn't for the stabbing pain in his shoulder, he might have kept them from gaining so quickly. As Indo continued to run, he took a quick glance behind him and recognized some of the faces of Akuma's men. Akuma sent some of his men to track him down after he escaped from their camp. Indo didn't know how he was able to keep his current pace just out of their reach, but the thought of having a sword pierce his stomach kept him going. One of Akuma's men shouted at him, We are going to kill you, fool, as they continued to chase him. Indo continued to run through the desert for what seemed like eternity, until he noticed an entrance into the mountains where he thought he could lose them. The architecture of a stone wall could be seen as he continued to run up the sandy slope leading into the mountains. Nearing the top of the slope, Indo could make out a city with armored guards standing by the main gate. Help! They're trying to kill me! Indo yelled. The guards took notice of the horde of bandits coming towards their main gates and ran to meet them in battle. Indo ran past the guards, weaving in between them as they clashed with the bandits. Metal clanged together along with the sound of war cries between the two groups. Indo felt guilty that he had led the bandits to their doorstep and decided to help fight. A stick wasn't a very good weapon against armored opponents but luckily his pursuers wore rags and leather. Indo selected a target and began to swing wildly, missing his mark. Having been a farmer for most of his life, he lacked the proper training and technique to land his blows. Due to the dislocated shoulder and the pain Indo felt as he swung, he was unable to produce any real power in his attacks, which all lacked the necessary precision to hit his targets. A bandit took notice of his lack of training and moved in to meet him on the field with a surprise attack. Indo began to parry the sequence of attacks. Each swing came faster than the one before it, setting him off balance. A nearby guard took advantage of the bandit preparing a final strike on Indo and swung his sword from behind, cutting the bandit at the side. Blood began to pour out of the wound like a river running downstream as a woman dropped to the ground, lifeless. The ground was littered with bodies as the battle ended. The gate guards wrapped each other's wounds and hobbled back towards the gate. Indo took the opportunity to loot some of the corpses which no one seemed to mind. I don't think you are going to need this, Indo muttered to the corpse as he took the clothing rags from its body. Now that his pursuers had been dealt with, Indo really needed to purchase some medical supplies to patch up his shoulder. Indo noticed a tavern not far from the front gates and began walking towards the entrance. The spare fighting sticks and clothing he looted would make enough coin to purchase a few medical supplies to bandage his arm. As Endo walked towards the barkeep, he could hear whispers from the locals discussing the most recent attack on the town. It must have been quite some time since the town was last attacked by bandits, Endo thought to himself. Welcome to the Eye Socket Tavern. What can I do for you? The barkeep said as Endo made eye contact with him. I'd like to see your wares, Endo said. The barkeep was happy to buy his newly acquired equipment in exchange for a few medical supplies. After trading wares with the barkeep, Endo began bandaging the cuts on his arms, wrapping them with cloth. Motioning the barkeep to come over, Endo asked for his help in resetting his dislocated shoulder. Lean over and put your arms on the counter, the barkeep said. Endo placed his arms on the counter and raised his left arm until he couldn't raise it anymore. The barkeep grabbed Indo's left arm and began to pull back slowly. Indo screamed as his shoulder finally popped back into place, his arm now fully extended over the counter. I think that'll do it, thanks for the help, Indo winced as he put his arm through the splint and headed towards the door. Indo left the tavern and stopped just short of the gates to ponder his next move. He knew he needed to get back to his village to warn everyone before Akuma learns that his men did not return. There is no telling what Akuma would do when he learns that Endo is still alive. Images of Akuma destroying Endo's village and hurting the people he loves ran through his mind as he headed towards the main gate. 
It would take many days and nights to reach the town of Brink, far to the northwest. From there, it was only a day's walk to his village. Indo had to move quickly before it was too late. He knew he was running out of time. <laughs>